In this video, we are going to derive the geostrophic equations of motion. These geostrophic equations describe the leading order dynamics of the oceans and atmospheres. We begin by scaling the terms of the momentum equations for flow on a rotating planet. Last time, we derived the momentum equation for flow on a rotating planet. We drop the viscosity term and look at the rotating Euler equation. We will first consider the vertical component of the rotating Euler equation. We write it out in full, giving the vertical acceleration and advection terms, a term with the x component of the rotation vector omega, a term with the y component of omega, gravity, and the vertical pressure gradient. We would like an idea of the magnitude of these terms and do so with the usual scaling procedure. We can assume that the vertical scale h is very much smaller than the horizontal scale l. The horizontal velocity scale is u, the time scale t is l on u and from continuity the vertical velocity scale w is uh on l. We can substitute these scales into the equation to find the dominant balance of terms. The first thing to note is that you should recall from last video the x component of the omega vector, the east-west component of rotation, is zero. Bringing these dynamical and scaled equations together, we can non-dimensionalize by dividing the scaled equation through by u squared on l to give a group of h on l sized terms and an omega l on u term on the left hand side and then non-dimensional gravity and pressure terms on the right. Let's consider some typical earth values for these scales. Omega is 10 to the minus 4 radians per second, gravity is 10, an ocean basin or an atmosphere system is between hundreds of kilometers up to the circumference of Earth. For the ocean, the vertical scale is kilometers with typical velocities under a meter per second, while for the atmosphere it is tens of kilometers deep with typical velocities up to tens of meters per second. We can plug these magnitudes in to find a fair separation of scales between the left and right hand sides. H on L is less than 1, omega L on U is under a thousand, while GL on U squared is over tens of thousands or even millions. So the leading order dynamical balance for the vertical component of the rotating Euler equation is between the gravity and pressure terms, meaning we can ignore the left hand side. This balance of course is something that you are already familiar with the hydrostatic approximation, which we have just seen remains relevant for flows on this rotating planet. Now we want to look at the horizontal scaling. We start with the x component of the Euler equation. We write these out in full, giving the acceleration and advection terms, the y and z components of the two omega cross u vector, and the pressure gradient in the x direction on the right hand side. We want to get a scaling for these terms. So, in addition to the standard scaling for length, velocity and time, we use the hydrostatic pressure scaling, that is, the pressure gradient in x depends on the density differences in x rather than the total density. Substituting for these scales gives a group of u squared on l terms and two terms with the rotation scale and then the scaled pressure term on the right. Bringing together these dynamical and scaled equations for the x component of the rotating Euler equation, we can non-dimensionalize by dividing through by u squared on L, returning a bunch of order 1 terms, a factor incorporating rotation outside of h on L minus 1, and then this non-dimensionalized hydrostatic pressure term. The first thing to remember is that h on L is small. So this bracket is order 1. The factor out the front of the bracket is the inverse of the Rossby number. The Rossby number is u on 2 omega l, the ratio between the inertial time scale and the rotation time scale. For small Rossby numbers, either small u, large l, or rapid rotation, this term dominates the left hand side and is necessarily balanced by this non-dimensional hydrostatic pressure term. Putting this back into dimensional form, what we are left with is that 2 times the velocity in the north-south multiplied by the 
locally vertical component of the rotation vector for that latitude theta is balanced by the density normalized east-west pressure gradient. That is, the north-south velocity is balanced by the east-west pressure gradient. So we can do this procedure again with the y component of the rotating Euler equation. This time, 2 omega cross u includes the east-west component of the rotation vector, which is zero, meaning we only have one rotation term in the expanded equation. Again, we scale these as before and non-dimensionalize with u squared on L, giving a bunch of order one terms, the inverse Rossby number on the left-hand side, and the non-dimensional hydrostatic pressure term on the right-hand side. So, for small Rossby numbers, these two terms dominate and you are left with negative two times the vertical component of the rotation vector latitude theta multiplied by the east-west velocity balanced by the north-south pressure gradient normalized by density. To reiterate, the east-west velocity is balanced by the north-south pressure gradient. Bringing these three scaled equations together completes the geostrophic approximation. The Euler equations for rotating flow reduced to hydrostatic in the vertical direction with the horizontal velocities balanced by their respective normal pressure gradients. These equations are often expressed using F, the Coriolis parameter, which is two times the locally vertical component of the rotation vector. Note that this changes sign across the equator, meaning a pressure gradient in a given direction is going to be balanced by opposing flows whether you are in the northern or southern hemisphere. This is why cyclones, hurricanes, typhoons, atmospheric weather systems, ocean currents and gyres flow in opposite directions in the northern and southern hemispheres. Consider an atmospheric low pressure system in the northern hemisphere. Which direction is the flow going to go?